many cases, um, they are able to reduce the budgeting process significantly with this rolling forecast process. Welcome back to FP&A Trend Series, and today we'll be talking about best practices and rolling forecasts. So, rolling forecasts have become very popular around the globe. What's the difference of a rolling forecast compared to a traditional forecast? I will explain uh, the difference with help of this slide. Uh, this is the example of five quarterly rolling forecast. Uh, and as you can see, we always have the same number of quarters moving forward. And this is the main difference. Uh, in traditional forecasting, as usually, we are stopping at the year end. And also another feature of um, traditional forecasting, um, longer we are in, in the current accounting period, less quarters or months you have to forecast. So this is the main difference. Okay, and what are the key benefits of a rolling forecast? Uh, there are a number of benefits. Uh, obviously, this is better accuracy because you are looking into the future uh, in more months, in more quarters. It must be much more flexible if it's uh, delivered through driver-based planning model. It's really applicable for this quick decision-making process. Uh, and also, it helps to improve corporate vision of the company, so to harmonize strategic planning and uh, business planning and operational planning process as well. But I must say that uh, if we think about um, some quantitative measures, how rolling forecast can improve uh, the company's performance, uh, this is the uh, IBM research. And they say that um, it improves forecasting accuracy by approximately 12%. Also, uh, with rolling forecast, you need 50% less budget preparation time. But I must say that uh, the most dynamic companies in the world, they fully abandoned a forecast budgeting process. They, they abandoned budgeting process. And this way, uh, they reduced budget preparation time uh, completely. And also companies that use rolling forecast, they're approximately 10% more profitable. So this is the uh, main benefits as per IBM research. So, Larissa, I heard a statistic that 20% of companies abandoned rolling forecasts. What's the reason for this? The main reason for this is because um, the companies were not ready for rolling forecast. And I will show you um, three stages of rolling forecast maturity. This is the model that was developed just uh, one month ago by London FPNA board, the board of uh, senior professionals, uh, practitioners from London City. and. Um, this is the decision, uh, this is the direction where uh, how uh, rolling forecast is maturing, how it's developing over the stages. So we have the basic stage, uh, which is, uh, is usually companies start there. And uh, the basic stage rolling forecast really is very basic. Uh, it's not dynamic at all, it's uh, static. Uh, it has two processes, both traditional and rolling forecast, so a lot of time wasters. Uh, also, very, very high level of detail. The collaboration level is really very basic as well. And when we uh, talk about analytics, because um, architecture of role and forecast at this stage uh, is not very analytical, I would say that um, in many cases they have very basic analytical tools as well, so it doesn't help. Uh, obviously, it also involves a lot of manual processes because companies still use Excel. The reason why 20% of companies um, are abandoning rolling forecast after initial implementation because they really stuck at this basic stage. Uh, they didn't have uh, probably analytical capabilities. The um, business culture didn't change. So they, uh, when they're at basic step, uh, at basic stage, they are not able to realize the potential of rolling forecast. And then. Um, Obviously, a lot of companies that uh, realized uh, the quality, realized the value from rolling forecast, they're at in intermediate stage at the moment. So they already started to use uh, some driver-based models. They're not exactly driver-based. They're partly driver-based, but it's much better from this point of view. They still probably have two uh, forecasting processes, both traditional and rolling, but they're moving towards rolling because they see a uh, more value add in this process. They still have this average level detail, but not to such extent as the basic level. Um, 
they already started to use uh, some predictive analytics uh, only because they have driver-based model and it helps with this. Uh, they have some partly automated processes, but their systems are still very inflexible. You see, so systems that um, I would say that IT people are responsible for these systems and very often for FPNA people, this is a black box. Uh, and for them, FPNA, um, uh, for, for them role in forecast, it's still a measurement tool when it should be uh, the management tool. Leading companies, uh, they have completely driver-based model. They have only one role in forecast. In many cases, um, they are able to reduce the budgeting process significantly with this role in forecast process. They have very low level of detail for, for forecasting for the reason of quality and speed. 80-20% um, principle is important. They have very collaborative planning process, advanced analytics, automated processes, and a very flexible FPNA system. We call them the new generation of FPNA systems for which they are responsible in finance department. This is self-service tools. And obviously, uh, in terms of the forecasting business culture, this is the management tool for them, not the measurement. So this is the main reason. Well, thank you for your time today, Larissa. It's been a pleasure having you in the studio. Thank you. That wraps up today's episode, but don't forget to click back for the next FPNA trend series.